Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. First, let me welcome uh, all the first timers. If you are here, not only for the first time, maybe even you accidentally stumbled uh, upon this, uh, welcome. And uh, I hope that uh, this uh, experience with us tonight is, is a blessing. And perhaps you'll want to join us every Wednesday. We also have a, a Sunday program. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. Uh, it's a basically a church uh, service, a church program we, we have. So for all the people who either don't have uh, a local church uh, that they're satisfied with, or perhaps maybe you have a great local church, but you'd like to also participate online with the congregation. Uh, that's, the, that's the role we're trying to fill for everybody here. And now we have also in the chat room uh, some of the regular Members of the congregation back with us again. Uh, welcome. Thanks for being here with us faithfully every time. And uh, if you're one of the uh, moderators in the chat room, uh, especially want to thank you for what you do. Uh, not only uh, do we rely on the moderators to uh, not let the trolls uh, ruin our, our fellowship, uh, but also um, I rely on the moderators to welcome any new people. And make sure you acknowledge them and know that they're welcome. And uh, by the way, in the chat room, if you have any questions as we go through the study tonight that uh, are relevant to this study, uh, put them in all caps. I know they say that all caps is rude, it's shouting. But in this case, don't worry, it's not rude. Uh, shout at me and you'll get my attention if you put it in all caps. All right, before we get into the study, we're going to begin where we left off last time, uh, Romans chapter 11, uh, beginning with verse 12. Uh, but before we start that, let me have uh, Renee and uh, Brother Cripps uh, introduce themselves. Uh, ladies first. Th that's you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, my name is Jason Cripps. <laughs> I have a show, it's called True Story Live. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was all I needed. That uh, you know, what? I'm actually, I'm actually very happy that that when he tries to act feminine, he doesn't pull it off. Thank, I know. You. Thank you, brother Luke. I appreciate that. I think my I don't voice... know. when he tries to be a cat, though, it's very convincing. There you go. <laughs> so it's Renee Rowland, channel of the same name. I untwist twisted verses that take away the blessed assurance we have in Christ. Uh, I contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. That is by God's grace through the vehicle of faith that we are saved based on the work of Christ only because he is the one uh, that has obtained eternal redemption for us all. If we simply put our trust in him. So I am anti-religion and pro Jesus uh, as all of us agree on the foundational truths here, who Jesus is and what he accomplished. And so we have these Bible studies um, with that foundation in place and we see through the eyes of grace. And so it's interesting to see how iron sharpens iron here on these nights. And I appreciate everyone joining us. Thanks, Brother Luke, and thanks for the laugh, Jason. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you you said your uh, kind of your your method of operation on your channel is to uh, untwist the twisted verses, and you know not only present the clear, um, um, real gospel message, but also um, defend it against those people who are twisting it and and ruining it. And you do a great job of that, but particularly today, I have to recognize, man, you are a busy saint today. I, I made a little comment talking about all the rewards you're going to be storing up from just what you did today. Uh, so if, if you're a viewer and um, you are either uh, confused about the uh, how to, what do our good works play uh, in salvation, do, does that factor in at all? If you're if you're not sure about all that, Renee's channel is the place to go. And if you if you are sure, uh, as we are, that uh, salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, if you already understand and believe correctly, uh, but maybe you have family or friends who uh, are on the wrong side of that, 
uh, that argument, then uh, you send them to Renee's channel. Okay, uh, uh, and we got Brother Cripps. So what are you doing on YouTube, brother? Uh, I have a show called True Story Live. I'm part of a panel, and we stand in the gap between belief and unbelief. And we try to invite everyone to the table so that we can discuss uh, uh, these topics. And uh, it's not necessarily a Bible study show. I'm doing air quotes nobody can see. Uh, but uh, we do believe the essential Gospels, and we discuss uh, biblical topics. Uh, but a, a lot of times it's from a, a relationship standpoint or sociology or psychology kind of uh, bend to it, um, and how to, how to just live everyday life in that way. And, um, yeah, so I'm also on this show on Wednesdays. I'm glad to be a part of the, the Bible study group that we have here. And also I do uh, Monday nights with uh, Talk and Doctrine and a, a show called Monday's Milk. Uh, it's it's uh, more of the milky topics of the word and the Christian life. So that's um, that's good. Also part of a show on Saturday, Steve's show. He's been on this show a few times as well. And uh, uh, that comes on Saturday night. And then little shows in between as people ask uh, to be a part of... Um, some of these uh, discussions and it's it's just a delight to um i like to say yes you know i like to be a part of any conversation anyone asks me to uh it's something i enjoy and i get a lot out of it and i hope you're edified tonight by the study thanks guys yes brothers uh since i've uh, gotten to know you i've uh, i've seen you go from uh just dipping your feet in the water and getting them wet here on youtube and to now you're Man, you're just splish splashing all day long. Uh, every day you're doing something, either your own program or joining other people's programs. So you're very, very busy too. And uh, I'm sure not only are many people blessed by your works, but also uh, I suspect you might be uh, storing up some treasures in heaven like Rene is. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Brother Luke. Praise God. That's awesome. By his grace, that is, uh, he gives us that uh, option to be able to do that. And it's out of our reasonable service that anyone would want to do anything. It doesn't do, it doesn't save us. It doesn't, um, it doesn't give us extra points in any way. Um, but for rewards, it is uh, useful. It's great. Thank you, Brother Luke, for saying that. Yeah. Now, you know, if I'm, I'm talking about rewards and, and the works that we do, you might say, well, Luke, why are you talking about doing religious works? Uh, well, um, many people, uh, just as they were falsely accusing Paul of, of uh, teaching that don't do any works and sin, to go out and sin even more, and he had to say, God forbid, See, Paul used this technique called prosopopoeia that we keep talking about, where he presents the uh, the opponent, the false teachers who are following him around, accusing him of being a false apostle. He presents their argument against him, and, and then he he refutes it, and that's his technique. And uh, but we are experiencing the same kind of a thing. We constantly get people charging, making these same charges against us. But it's not that we are against works. Uh, we we not only uh, want to work, but uh, it's a pleasure. We, we, our attitude about works is it's a privilege and a joy to work for the Lord. And uh, it's not laborious. It's, oh, gosh, I don't know if I can do anything today. It's just oh, it's so difficult. And no, gosh, it's uh, we're just full with full of the Holy Spirit. And, and uh uh, realize what a great joy and pleasure it is to hey what could be better than talking about jesus in the bible and being with other believers so it's it's a wonderful thing with it we we do but it technically it is works um okay so so my channel is uh, mostly based on uh, uh the focus is evangelism telling people uh who jesus is and how do you get saved uh, uh, but then I also have over 60 playlists on every kind of theological subject you could wonder about. Uh, so I, I hope you'll go to my channel, look through the playlists, and uh, actually dare, as a few people are doing, 
dare to go ahead and look at a playlist and watch it from from video one through video 10 or 20 and and uh take your time with it and uh you maybe you'll uh maybe you'll find out that uh, you learned something new that was helpful okay now let's get started with our study romans uh we we're on chapter 11 so if you have not seen the studies on romans uh, leading up to this they are uh on a playlist on my channel uh so i hope you go watch this from the beginning but now we'll pick up where we left off romans chapter 11 verse 12. Um, i'll read in the i'm a kjv firstest so i read in the kjv first and then we'll look at other translations if it, we think it might be helpful paul writes now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the gentiles how much more their fullness for i speak to you gentiles inasmuch as i am the apostle of the gentiles i magnify mine office let me stop right there Okay, uh, maybe Renee, you can give us just a little context. Uh, yeah. Verse 12. Yeah, uh, he's telling uh, the Gentiles not to get, not to hate the Jewish people, not to think themselves better than the Jewish people, uh, and to want their salvation as a whole. Don't glory in their blindness. Because if we as Gentiles are blessed so greatly because of their fault, because of their blindness, now salvation has been offered to the Gentiles. You'll see that in a lot of a lot of what Jesus is preaching about the first being last and last being first is in reference to the called out nation being first, but then they're actually last because they reject him. And then the last called, which were the Gentiles, are actually first, first to believe. So you'll see in a lot of parables, it's almost always giving a mystery of the gentiles being grafted in so it's saying if we're that blessed in their blindness how much more will we be blessed when they come to the truth when god's people are believing when the when the nation of israel is in belief how much more will the world be blessed then if we're this blessed when the apple of god's eye is in unbelief that's why it's ridiculous for anybody to read this chapter and say, God's done with Israel. We've already read the part. So I can say it where he says, has God forsaken his people that they should the stumble? Have they stumbled so that they should fall? God forbid the gifts and calling of God without repentance. So uh, there's no, no way anybody should be confused that God, the church has either replaced Israel or that God is done with the nation of israel because we should be uh we shouldn't glory in their blindness but wish for their uh, uh eyes to be open because we'll be even more blessed you know in their fullness okay all right sister uh do you want to say uh, anything about verse 13 do you have it in front of you for i speak yeah, he's, he's saying he's a. Uh, it's a continue because he he continues his thing in the next verse so it's kind of hard to continue you know to say something about 13 without going into 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 14 because he's saying that you know uh he he is the one assigned to the gentiles specifically it's not that he can't preach the jews peter was sent to the circumcision and paul was sent to the uncircumcision and then it says he magnifies his office and then we find out why in the next verse Okay. All right. Thanks. Brother Cripps, uh, the 12 and 13, but I'm going to read them in the Amplified before you talk, just so maybe that'll add to the uh, the conversation here. In the Amplified, 12 and 13 says, now if Israel's transgression means riches for the world at large, and their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their fulfillment and reinstatement be? But now I am speaking to you who are Gentiles in as much then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. Now, I'm, I'm going to read this emphasizing word. 
inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, uh, I magnify my ministry. Um, so, Brother Cripps, uh, give me your thoughts on 12 and 13, please. Yes, sir. Um, first, I'll say that Renee uh, uh, did a good job of explaining it. I can't really add anything more to that part. But when she was talking about it, the, the picture that I got in my mind was when all the stuff does take place and uh, Israel does believe. I mean, they're finally at that point of reconciliation with God. The people on the earth, even during that time, I mean, when we talk about the blessings of Israel, the rest of the nations being blessed, we believe that. We can believe everything that's in God's word. But that moment when the uh, the spiritual Israel believes and accepts that that they crucified, we were talking about this last week, when they, when they first go through the agony of realizing that they crucified the, their Messiah, and then they get to the other side of that and realizing that he's forgiving them and that he was not done with Israel, that that moment itself, I, I see it as uh, spreading like a wildfire, an absolute wildfire uh, in the world at that time. And and it, it just it's an amazing thought. It's the, the idea of God reconciling Israel to himself after all this time, after all the, the time that um, uh, churches falsely uh, believe in replacement theology and think that they've taken the place, all that's going to be put to rest. And uh, the very fact that we've talked about how the Gentiles are blessed because of Israel, we've gone over those verses. Um, so in verse 12, he's just, he's just kind of making that point, just as Renee said. So if, if we're blessed in the amount that the Gentiles are blessed because of what Israel went through, how much more are we going to be blessed when they come into full reconciliation with God? It's going to be incredible. And then verse 13 um, it, it, it does explain it more in the verses to come, but he's just basically saying, um, as an apostle uh, to the Gentiles, of course, he sees this more clearly than everyone else. And I think that's true. Um, I would I would add to that as he was the apostle. There were other apostles, but he was the apostle uh, to the Gentiles. Um, and, and we're so blessed to have that. We're so blessed to even do these studies uh, that are all... Um, tying this all up in a nice in a nice way. So, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I was interested in uh, your thoughts on uh, thirteen. Even though, uh, as we see the way it's the sentence is constructed there and the punctuation. It should be connected to verse 14, but there's something in verse 13. What you said about verse 12, both of you, I don't need to elaborate any further. You, you covered that very well, so, but but I have a lot to say about verse 13. And uh, even though we all agree Jesus is eternal God Almighty, he's not a created being, he's eternal. He's the creator of all things. He has no beginning or end. We, we all agree that salvation is not earned by our religious effort. It's received as a free gift by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, because he paid for our sins on the cross. And so, um, and, and we, we also all agree that um, when we receive this gift, it's irrevocable and irreversible by God or by us. We believe in eternal security. Um, these are the core doctrines of what I call Christianity. But uh, there are also uh, many other uh, qu important questions and subjects under this umbrella of Christiana, Christianity that um, I guess we all have little areas of expertise in niches. And a niche that I've carved for myself and a niche that I actually try to champion I'm, I'm sad to say, I'm almost alone. There are many other people who, who have written about it and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of material on this subject, but I, uh, uh, today, hardly anybody is speaking out against it. We tend to just let it go, let it go. Don't make any waves because the Paul only or what is typically always been called the hyper 
dispensationalists. Um, don't worry about them. them. They're still brothers and sisters. Yes, I agree, they are. They believe uh, we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. No works contribute in any way, and just as we do. But the mistake that they make in uh, their hyper-dispensationalism is that they say Paul is the only one that we can learn the gospel from. You can't get it from, from the Old Testament. You can't get it from uh, the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can't get it anywhere in the Bible except from Paul's writings. And many of them even narrow it down even to only particular writings of Paul's. Some even take it to such extremes. They say the gospel wasn't even, uh, Paul didn't know the gospel until um, his prison ministry near the end of his life. This is how far they over divide the word of God, exclude everything else and say only this little portion of scripture is, is to the church right now. So uh, when I see a, a phrase like this, I have a lot to say about it. I mean, it says that Paul says, I am the apostle to the Gentiles. And then in the Amplified, he says, it says, uh, as much then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, uh, I, I want to say, uh, I elevate Paul in some ways. I keep on saying that Paul's greatest contribution is the fact that he says, Jesus is right. You get saved by believing. And 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 uh, all, all the other scriptures are right. You get saved by your believing. You, you see it uh, everywhere. But I, Paul, I, Paul, I'm telling you, if you mess with that, you've ruined it. If you add circumcision or water baptism or any kind of religious works into it, you've nullified it. So he says, Paul takes it a step further and tightens it and says, don't add anything to it or it's, it has no value. Can't save you. So that's really Paul's great contribution. But the Paul only is, they want to elevate Paul even more so and say, he's the only apostle. We ignore the others. And even we ignore the words of Jesus. This is how extreme their viewpoint is. They say you can't get saved by reading the red letters, the actual words Jesus spoke. So it's an extreme viewpoint. Now, uh, if you just focus on Paul's writings, you probably do pretty well. You don't really have to read the rest of the Bible. But I resent them diminishing the words of Jesus and John and Peter and others uh, and, and elevating Paul to that stature. Uh, and but and there, there's verses in the Bible that they will try to argue this is this is why. I have a playlist. How many times have I said that? I have a playlist titled Paul Onlyism Debunked. I just urge everybody. I, I'm actually begging everybody. That's how important this is. I'm begging everybody to watch that playlist carefully. And uh, uh, I, every every um, doctrine of hyper dispensationalism, I, I confront and, and, and destroy with scripture. I'm with you on that. It's dangerous to say only this. You can only learn from this in scripture. This is only to you. No, all of it's good. It's just got to be divided in context. All yeah. of it. Now I'll give you just a little bit of a hint pertaining to this verse and the con and the, and the idea of the apostle to the Gentiles. Well, I I'll tell you this, uh, we all know, maybe we've never really thought about it, but we're all aware that the first people, first one to ever preach to the Gentiles was Peter. So are we going to say Peter was not an apostle of the Gentiles? He was not only he was an apostle of the Gentiles, and he was the first. And when he gives his account to what he told the Gentiles when he had to defend himself to James and the Jerusalem church, he said, uh, I told them to believe on the Lord, and they did, and they, uh, the Lord Jesus, and they did, and they got saved just like we did, and they were referring to speaking in tongues as evidence. And so um, he gave them the same gospel message, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that before Paul did in Acts. And um, so to think that Paul is the only apostle of the Gentiles is, is, is easily proven wrong. And to, to, to think that he's, uh, he wasn't even, not even the first apostle of Gentiles. I do agree, though, that there was a dispute. And Paul was uh, unique in some ways, the, the points that I made earlier about Paul, his great contribution that he made. But uh, there was an argument in Acts. Um, 
um, it, 20 years after Pentecost, when they had the council at Jerusalem, that was 20 years after Pentecost, this argument was still going on is where does circumcision and, and, and Judaism play in this? And they had to go to Jerusalem and have a meeting. That's 20 years they didn't hadn't cleared that up issue issue up. And so they go to Jerusalem to try to discuss it. And uh, um, at that at that time, Paul is sent off. Okay, Paul, this is how my take on it. You might not agree, but I believe when they say, okay, Paul, you go to the Gentiles and we'll talk to the Jews. I don't think they're wishing Paul well, encouraging him to go, oh, we're so happy that you go focus on the Gentile. We want them to be saved. I think it was a grudging attitude. I think even at that point in time, they did not want to integrate with Gentiles. There was still racism going on. They did not really want to have anything to do with, with the Gentile believers. And they were happy to send Paul off. Let's let Paul go off and waste his time with those Gentiles and get him out of our hair. All he's doing is, is creating problems. Uh, some of our people even want to kill him. They took an oath to kill him because he's preaching against law. So um, that's how I see it. And that's and I, I can prove it. I document it point by point in scriptures. So that's why when I see this little point here, I cannot just skim over it. I have to say, when it says Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, uh, all the apostles eventually, I think, understood correctly. And they all eventually went off and died in other foreign countries preaching to Gentiles. So all apostles are apostles to the Gentiles. Okay. Uh, anything more before we go uh, to the next verse? Well, I was just going to say where he says, I magnify mine office. I'm agreeing with what you're saying because I know what's coming next. So I, I'm what you're, you're touching on something that, is mentioned in the next verse, and it's really good you set that up. Okay, thank you, Sister. Uh, let me go to the next verse then, verse 14 in the KJV. Uh, well, let me read 13 together with it to get uh, context better. Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnified mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Okay, Sister Renee, I'll stop at 14. Go ahead. Yeah, because, I mean, he's, he's clarifying here that, yes, my primary mission was to you Gentiles. But he also says, I magnify mine office. I make it larger so that he can... Pro, let, let me read exactly how it says it. If by any means I may provoke to emulation, which be uh, which means to imitate or to have a goal of exceeding the achievement of another, either meeting that achievement or exceeding it by imitation. So he wants to provoke the Jews to meet this expectation that they are now seeing in the Gentiles seeing in him as a apostle to the Gentiles more than just the Gentiles themselves. Cause he's saying it's my office that I'm magnifying, making larger, uh, making, um, putting under scrutiny and making bigger. If by any means I may provoke to emulation. So he wants, uh, also not only to the Gentiles, but also hoping that even though he's an apostle to the Gentiles, that he would be able to through his uh, preaching and and uh, the behavior within his uh, uh, called out apostleship in the office of his apostleship that the Jews might come to faith that some of his flesh some of the uh, uh, that that's why I don't understand when people go the Jews are those that are Jews inwardly yes absolutely and they which are of the faith the same are the children of Abraham does that make void the promises of those by the flesh to Abraham though no it doesn't no it doesn't although his children are as numerous as the stars some of them are his children by faith but others of them are his children by flesh and the promise came before the law and that promise is not null and void so i i i don't know why people say that there's no longer such a thing as a jew of course there is there's 12 tribes of israel and they are scattered abroad and god knows where they are and he's going to deal with them i don't i i, I can't stand 
because they mix the two, the spiritual Israel that we're grafted into with the physical descendants, which has still got some promises uh, that were given to them and God will deal with them. So he's saying that based on his work, he's going to magnify the office, not just to the Gentiles, but also in the hopes that some of his uh, flesh, some of his physical brethren uh, would come to faith and they would be saved as well. I think that's what he's saying. All right. Thank you. Uh, Brother Cripps, uh, th verse 13 and 14, I'll read them together in the Amplified for you. And uh, uh, not really for you, but uh, I, I like to add this at this point here. So we have another, it's like having the Amplified uh, amplified uh, translators joining us and in, in, in telling us their thoughts on this verse. 13 and 14 says, but now I am speaking to you uh, who are Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnified my ministry. 14 in, oh, that's, that's verse 14. <laughs> I read, it says number 14 there. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, in the hope of somehow making my fellow countrymen jealous by stirring them up so that they will seek the truth and perhaps save some of them, Brother Cripps. Yes. <laughs> you know what? Let, me, let me confess. When I saw the 14 there, instead of my mind thinking this is verse 14, yeah. I thought of the 14 years Paul was delayed uh, in starting his missionary work. There's a 14-year gap there, and yeah. that, uh, that came to my head for some reason. <laughs> it's, it's okay, Brother Luke. We, we all, we all uh, make uh, errors from time to time. No big deal, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, so this is referring to, we've gone over in the study, the other verses uh, before that talked about that how in God not being finished with Israel, but uh, by reaching out to the Gentiles would provoke them to jealousy. So verse 14, he's just making a finer point on it. And I love the, well, the way the Amplified puts it. It makes it very, very simple in the hope of somehow making my fellow countrymen jealous. Bottom line, boom. Um, and hoping that they will see that and come to the truth. Um, and in a way, it should it should have worked. You know, God going to a different people, it, it, if God says, you guys are my people, and they, they turn away from him, and then he goes, okay, well, I'll go over to these other people then, and I'll, uh, I'll offer them salvation, see how they like it. And they liked it. They liked it. They, they weren't stiff-necked people. They didn't, they, didn't, um, uh, they, they didn't turn away from it. So Paul's just bringing this, bringing this out so that, that they can see it, that God did that purposefully. And uh, it's Paul making, uh, making more of a point on it. And uh, the Amplified states it very clearly. It's, it was to make, to make uh, his own people jealous. And um, it, it's a good ploy. And it seems like it should have worked. And it did work for some. Um, but really, the change will come uh, in the end when they, they can actually see it. Uh, more clearly, and come back to him again to the reconciliation. Thanks. Well, yeah, I um, I am so thankful that Paul was not a bigot. He probably was a bigot at some point. Uh, and when I say bigot, I'm talking about there was bigotry, there was um, discrimination, there was segregation in. Israel uh, and in Jerusalem, and that whole uh, group of people, the Jewish people, they look down on Gentiles. They consider them to be unclean. And there's only one thing worse than a Gentile. Half Gentile, half Jew. If you intermarry, uh, your, your offspring are called uh, Samaritans. And uh, the Samaritan is even lower than a Gentile. And when Peter preached in uh, Cornelius's house, he got a lot of flack for that. First of all, before he was even able to explain the, his entire uh, account of everything, they were all criticizing, how in the world could you, would you dare to enter a Gentile's house? Do you know that's forbidden? You're unclean. And uh, he has to go and defend it, why he did it, because God told him to do it. And he says, he says Hey, 
uh, I don't care what any man tells me. If God tells me to do something, God, I'm going to follow God's instructions instead of man's. Um, so uh, we see there that um, this uh, segregation in society existed. And um, uh, God told Peter, and, and then later on, uh, he, he, he made it clear to Paul that no, Gentiles are, are not, you're not just segregated any longer. Paul, uh, you're, you're going to be the, my apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, all already before that, he'd sent Peter to the Gentiles. Uh, and so it, it was made clear to both of them that uh, uh, this idea of segregating their societies. And Jesus even was segregated. Remember, Jesus said that um, in, in, in his own words, he said that he, we shouldn't be uh, having anything to do with the, the Gentiles. Uh, it's, he came only for the, the Jewish people, for Israel. Uh, and then the, the woman says, well, can I even have some crumbs at least? And, and I could, because he referred to them as dogs. And he says, well, even dogs can get some crumbs, can't they? Uh, so uh, even Jesus uh, taught that, no, we need to be separated. You cannot mix. And, and if this is, uh, we don't want you mixing yet. But there did come a point where God told Peter to mix with the Gen Gentiles. She told Paul, you're the, minute, the uh, apostle to the Gentiles. So Paul, in spite of how he was raised and trained, he thankfully got rid of that prejudice and started preaching to Gentiles. And I'm glad he did because without, without all of his efforts for us, uh, we might be in real big trouble today if we didn't have him clarifying a lot of things for us. Uh, but um, let me see. Um, oh yeah, I remember why I went into that. Because here in verse 14, we see that, that Paul still had, and Rome was written, was written late in Paul's life. Even at this point, Paul is still expressing his desire to get his, his brethren, his countrymen, the Jewish people, saved. Remember in chapter 9, two chapters earlier, he even said, I would be willing to forfeit my own salvation if it meant that my brethren, Jewish brethren, would become believers and get saved. He never stopped being conserved and loving the Jewish people and wanting them to be saved. I remember at one point he finally did say, I give up. I'm done with you. I'm just going on with the Gentiles. That's it. But he didn't really fall through with that. He continued every town he went to. It was his custom to go to the synagogue first and preach to the Jewish people first going through the scriptures, and the only scriptures they had were the, uh, the the law and the prophets. So he showed them through the Old Testament about Jesus. And uh, and then, of course, every time in a synagogue, he was kicked out and uh, shunned, and then uh, he, he'd go off and do what he was really intended to do, and that's uh, go to the Gentiles. Uh, so we see here in verse 14, uh, he's still expressing this uh, great love for his own Jewish people. Now, maybe uh, Brother Cripps or Sister Renee, maybe you can tell me where that verse is where Paul says, I'm done with the Jews, even though he didn't really fall through. Do you remember where that is? Uh, nope. Mm, no, I'd have to hear more similar what it sounded like. Yeah. Are you, you're familiar with it, though? I mean, you're under, you yeah, understand yeah. it. Is. Okay. All right. Um, okay, let's go to the next verse unless any more you want to add to, any more to, to that. Verse 15. Verse 15 in the KJV is, um, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Sister Renee? All right, I want to read this. Um, it says, if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, we just re we just talked about how uh, the Jews are in temporarily blindness. And now because of that, salvation has been offered to the Gentiles. So because they have been set aside so the world can be reconciled, the other nations, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Again, we're supposed to rejoice and pray for Israel's blindness to end. 
because we'll, although we're blessed now in their blindness, we'll be even more blessed when they have joined us in faith. And uh, also, uh, Luke, real quick, one of the people were asking you a question. I told them that suicide is not unforgivable and that Samson and Saul had both committed suicide. And he just wanted you to confirm if that was true or not. Oh, okay. They they don't believe your your claim. Uh, well, he just asked you. I guess he's your viewer. Oh, so. oh okay. Who, uh, who who was it that asked? A and, a and J, I think. I'm sorry to get off topic, but oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, uh, there is an account of Samson killing himself. He he basically sacrificed his life to kill his enemies, and then uh, Saul, rather than be taken by uh, the the opposing army, and having them uh, do new, who knows what to him, uh, he wanted to be killed. And rather than killing, falling on his own sword, he had his uh, servant kill him. So yeah, that yeah, and there's there's probably other examples that we really thought carefully about it. But uh, yeah, if we believe that uh, uh, the the gospel, the if we understand the way that we do, then then there's obviously nothing you can do that's uh, unforgivable. Everything is forgiven. God already knows uh, if you if you ever if you're somebody that at some point will commit suicide, God already knows it before you know it, and they paid for it. All right. Any any more before we go to the next verse? Oh, brother Cripps, uh, verse fifteen. Uh, let me read in the Amplified for you. For if their present rejection of salvation is for the reconciliation of the world to God. What will their acceptance of salvation be but nothing less than life from the dead? Yeah, the, amp the Amplified uh, says it very well. Um, so if, if God turning to the Gentiles uh, and him allowing uh, there be a season of rejection, but the result of that was that the rest of the world had an option of being saved, then how, how much more exciting and fulfilling will it be when uh, spiritual Israel also turns uh, back to God? Um, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's increasing the body of, uh, of Christ. It's increasing the amount of uh, people and just seeing how it all played out throughout history is amazing. I mean, just the whole storyline, you can't write a storyline like this in a, in a fantasy novel. I mean, just the ins and outs and, and all the things that have uh, taken place and will take place. Um, so uh, God um, uh, allowing other people to be saved. Now, of course, this was his plan the whole time, but the way that we're talking about it from the perspective of Israel uh, they're they're looking at uh, considering themselves God's chosen people, and then no one else was allowed. It was you know, it was just Israel, and then all of a sudden everyone else is allowed. And then so when they finally come to the realization that God didn't give up on them, and that He forgave them for uh, crucifying the Messiah, the very Messiah that they've been waiting for, and it's prophesied in Scripture, they killed him. So to, to have that realization once again, and the result of that being that the rest of the world is saved, it's such a blessing, absolute blessing. And that's what, um, that's what this verse is talking about to me. And again, here's my, you've heard me say this before, just, just real quickly. This is one of my favorite words in the Bible, and that's reconciliation. The, the, all of the Bible is, a, 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 is about that. It is a story of reconciliation. Uh, man sinned and turned from God, and then he had a plan from before the foundations of the world to reconcile everyone to him. And that word itself is beautiful to my ears. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Reconciliation. Uh, well, what, uh, what really stands out to me uh, at the end of verse 15, it says... Uh, what what will their acceptance of salvation be but nothing less than life from the dead <laughs> life from the dead now it's talking about a, a, a group of people uh, a nation that is as Paul points out in in chapter 9 
such a tiny little percentage of the Jewish people ended up believing in Jesus. And he says, is, is God plan, uh, what, what was that? Did he have a bad plan? Well, because hardly any Jews believing, or the Gentiles are all believing, but the Jews aren't. Was something wrong with God's plan? And um, so it may, if people were wondering, well, if he's really the Messiah, why aren't all the Jews believing him? Uh, so that's what chapter nine is uh, is really about. But the uh, uh, he's talking about life from the dead for, for a group of people. And uh, the idea that uh, if the Jewish people as a whole were believers, it would be like bringing a nation back from the dead. And we know that that's exactly what salvation is uh, on an individual basis. Uh, every time we believe, we're brought to life. There's a, there's a term in the Bible that most people uh, believe is uh, differently than I do. I used to believe this way, the old way, that uh, when the Bible says the first resurrection and the second resurrection, uh, I used to think that they, that was talking about the, the rapture and then a tribulation period and then a, a resurrection after that. Uh, but I believe the first resurrection really is the new birth. I b believe that the, uh, uh, it's the resurrection of our spirit. First, our spirit is resurrected and brought to life. And then later on, our bodies will be resurrected. That's the second resurrection. Amen. Uh, my neighbor, you can, I don't know if you can hear the dog, but we have two barking dogs there. That The whole neighborhood is in an uproar over this one neighbor that is just a nuisance because of his dogs. Uh, but now they're, I wish I could, I, I'm thinking maybe I need to move my office to a different side of the house so I can't hear them, but. I don't know if you're, you're hearing, or hearing it or being distracted or, if, or it's just distracting me. That That's actually that's actually the first time. I, I mean, I heard him one other time, but it doesn't happen that often, yeah. Brother Luke. I mean, you yeah. can hear it, but it's all right. in the background. Uh, okay, so we've all talked about verse 15. Let's go to verse 16. Now. Uh, in the KJV first, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And I'm going to read 17 because it's continuing the thought. And if some of the branches be broken off, and though uh, uh, being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. I don't, uh, I don't follow all that perfectly, but uh, thankfully I have the Amplified to go to, and I have Sister Renee to explain it. Go ahead, Sister, for, through uh, verse 18, uh, 16 through 18. You there? Yeah. Um, now, there's two ways you can look at this. Jesus being the first fruit, and then whatever's connected to him is also holy. First fruit being holy, whatever's connected to him is also holy. But in this context, it looks like it's talking about that Israel as a nation was set apart, and we should not boast and think we're special because it was actually Israel that was set apart, and we were grafted into them. So we shouldn't be getting puffed up in ourselves thinking we're so special, like God has forsaken his people, now it's us. No, you should remember that there is a believing remnant of Israel. God is not done with Israel, and it is not them that's grafted into you, but you grafted into them. Amen. That's, thank you. Or if the first fruit be holy, the lump's holy. If the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them. And by the way, when an olive tree is dying, I studied this, check this out, this will blow your mind. When an olive tree is dying, they take and cut a diagonal cut in one of the branches, right? Then they take, let's say a wild olive tree that's alive and flourishing, 
and they put that living branch onto the dying olive tree and they wrap it. And in three days, you'll know if the tree has been revived to life or not. How amazing is that? Pretty in amazing. Three days time, you find out if it's the, the, the tree itself comes back to life because of the branch being grafted on. Amen. So if some of the branches be broken off, talking about some of the Jews didn't believe, and now being a wild olive tree, work grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. See, you're partakers of the promises to the nation of Israel, to the descendants of Abraham, right? Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. See, you're, you're boasting against them, but it's them that hold you up. It's the foundation and the promises made to them that you're grafted into. Yeah. So you shouldn't be boasting against them. And what do we see in the churches, Jason and, and Luke? Boasting against them. God's done with them. They rejected yep. it. Now it's us. We're the one. It's just horrible. What's yep. being Agreed. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. And I'm really happy with the Amplified, the way it kind of fills in the blanks for me. Um, but Renee, I just posted it at the bottom of our chat space, 16, 17, 18 in the Amplified. Oh, cool. All and right. I want, I want you to look at it as, as I read it and then have Brother Cripps talk about it. I want you to respond to the 16, 17, 18. And tell me if you think the Amplified has the right people identifying with the right parts of this. All okay. Here. Okay. Uh, so... Brother Cripps, he says, I got to turn my fan on. I'm sorry here. Okay. Oh. If the first portion of dough offered as the first fruits is holy, so is the whole batch. And if the root, that is Abraham and the, the patriarchs, is holy, so are the branches. That's Israel. But if some of the branches were broken off and you Gentiles being like a wild olive shoot were grafted in among them to share with them the rich root of the olive tree, do not boast over the broken branches and exalt yourself at their expense. If you do boast and feel superior, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root. This supports you. Yeah, I'm good with that. I, I'm glad it mentions Abraham and the patriarchs. So I was like saying, you know, uh, it is the promises were made to them. The law does not nullify the promises. And even though the promises were made to Abraham and his descendants, let's just admit it. The physical descendants of Abraham were given promises. Physical descendants of Abraham. But we grafted in, we are the children of Abraham by faith. So the same, uh, uh, those who are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. However, it does not negate the promises to Abraham's uh, descendants. And God, uh, the gifts and calling her without repentance, God's not going to forget that. He's not going to forget that. And I am so glad they mentioned Abraham and the patriarchs and not just Israel because it goes, past israel it goes past jacob and goes all the way back to abraham so i'm i'm with that i'm fine with that description what i what i found interesting and i wanted your thoughts uh, was that uh, you have uh he says if the root and that is abraham and the patriarchs is holy so are the branches that is the israelites so here he's got the root being the patriarchs and abraham and the, but the branches being distinct from them being the Israelites. Uh, and then, of course, the others is the other group is the Gentiles that are, who are grafted in. But uh, I don't think I've ever thought of it that way with the, the distinction of the Abraham and then also then the Israelites and then the Gentiles, these three. I didn't yeah. really see that. But uh, I, I thought I always thought of the branches as the believing remnant of the Jews and the Gentiles all together as branches, you know. I think that the, it makes sense the way that they're um, yeah, it does. defining it. Uh, Brother Cripps, uh, go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I've been waiting, been waiting for this one because th this is, is there, is there, and I'm asking this kind of rhetorically, but if you have a comment, I would love to hear it. 
These three verses refute replacement theology completely. Thank you. Absolutely completely. How anyone can read these three verses and think that we've somehow replaced Israel is beyond me. I don't understand it. And the I, I lose my mind, dude. I've, yeah. I've read the entire chapter to them, verse by verse, and they still leave that garbage at the on the bottom of the video comment. Yep, they're deceived. They're deceiving yep. themselves and they're deceiving others to think that we've replaced Israel in any way. That's not the case. The Amplified puts this in in, in perfect perspective. Okay, so uh, Brother Luke read the read the verses. So we are described, we being the Gentiles, are described as a wild olive branch, the wild, wild olive shoot, more specifically in the Amplified. We're grafted in among them to share, share, H-S-H-A-R-E, share, not replace, with them the rich root of the olive tree. The olive tree, um, we're, we're grafted in. So yes, branches were broken off and we were put in. We do not replace them. In fact, later, biblically speaking, some of those branches will be put back in. Some of the broken branches will be put back in. So they're grafted back into what they were originally a part of in the first place, which is any Israelite that uh, later believes in the Messiah and uh, become a part of the family of God again. Um, and we're, we should just be glad that we're the wild olive shoot that is included as well, because he didn't have to do that. He could have just kept it like it was. He could have chosen Israel as, their, as his chosen people and kept it like that. If they didn't accept, too bad. No one else gets to come. And of course, that wasn't his plan, but I'm just saying, as him being God, he could have decided to do that. He can choose whoever he wants to choose, and he can deny whoever he wants to deny. He's God. He has that capability, but his love is so great that he included us in it as well. So we should we should have a humility and a humbleness that comes of thank you, God. Thank you for letting us be a part of this. Um, we shouldn't have any kind of attitude of superiority because we are not superior. Uh, we don't get anything just because we had the uh, uh, ability, which is given to us by God to accept it in the first place. He just didn't, he didn't blind us. Israel uh, is, is in many ways spiritually blinded. He didn't blind us. He left our eyes alone so that we would be able to see. And so that's not, we don't get a special mark for that. We're not, we're not superior. We're not special. We haven't replaced anyone. We're grafted in by the grace of God, plain and simple. And these three verses refute that in my mind. Um, and the last verse is the most important, but the root that supports you. It's the root that supports you. You're, you know, it, it seems so clear to me. I just don't under, understand how people get it twisted, but they do, just like everything else. Okay, uh, let's go to 19 in the KJV. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. <laughs> okay, so that's 19 through 21, Renee. Sorry, I couldn't get the little button to hit there. Yeah. I, I, I seriously am like, with my mouth agape, just like Jason, uh, when people uh, do this, you know, when they refuse to, to see this, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Oh, is that not what they say now? God's done with Israel, and now it's all about us. Yep, that's what now, they say. The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. That's exactly what they're saying. The branches are broken off and gone. That's what they say. They're gone. And should should I go to 20? I read through 21. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also 
spare not thee. Now, a lot of people try to use this verse uh, to say that uh, you can lose salvation. No, these people never believed. They were broken off because of what? It says right here, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And when he says, take heed lest he also spare not thee, he's not speaking to an individual that's already saved. He's speaking to Gentiles as a whole. He's speaking to Gentiles as a whole. So when he says, uh, take heed that he also spare, uh, spare not thee as Gentiles. So that he's warning them to not reject Jesus. That's all he's doing. He's not saying you're a Gentile. I'm specifically speaking to you who believes because you're going to lose salvation. So be careful. No, he's talking to Gentiles as a whole that they need to believe on Jesus because although he has grafted Gentiles in, if you don't believe you're broken off too. That's all it's saying. Just like Israel is a nation, Gentiles as nations will also be broken off if they reject Christ. Have y'all heard that be used to, to promote law, salvific loss? I have. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I have. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brother Cripps, uh, let me read it in the Amplified before you give us your thoughts. Uh, Please do. Uh, uh, you will say then, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand by your faith as believers understand standing the truth of Christ's deity, do not be conceited, but rather stand in great awe of God and fear him. For if God did not spare the natural branches because of unbelief, he will not spare you either. Okay. Yeah, so there, there's one important thread to talk about here, and that is the, the term unbelief. Whether Jew or Gentile, the reason isn't because of, uh, you know, they sinned or they backslid or they did this or that. It's not about losing salvation. Uh, how do you come to salvation in the first place? There's only one way, and that's by believing. So whether Jew or Gentile, originally it was the Jew that didn't believe, and so they were broken off because of unbelief. That's the reason why they were broken off. And we were grafted in because of belief. That's the only reason why, belief. And he's saying, be careful. Don't be conceited here. The Amplified uh, says it perfectly. Don't be conceited, but rather stand in great awe of God and fear him. And then verse 21, for if God did not spare the natural branches, and then in brackets, it says clearly, because of unbelief. And that's the same uh, uh, above when talking about Israel, because of unbelief. That's the only reason, because of their unbelief. That's the reason why they were broken off. And that's the reason why anyone else would be broken off, Jew or Gentile, not because of any other reason. It's not about losing, as Renee was pointing out, it's not, it's not about losing your salvation. They never believed in the first place. They were broken off because they never believed. The whole tree was already put together. So people are, are, are taken off by unbelief and eventually cast into the fire, which is a completely different verse, but that, that it's, that's the way to picture it. Um, so the only reason is because of unbelief. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll go to 22. Uh, then appreciate the gracious kindness and the severity of God to those who fell into spiritual ruin. Oh, wait a second. I'm reading the Amplified. I got to go back to the KJV first. Uh, okay. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou, shalt, thou also shall be cut off. Verse uh, 22, Renee. Yeah. Hold on. Let me get to the page. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness. 
if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. Again, people try to use this as a personal salvific verse. When it talks about you, it's talking to a wide net of Gentiles. It's not saying you, you guy, that guy, the Gentile believer. If you don't continue in his goodness, you're going to lose salvation. No, no. He's talking to Gentiles as a whole that the Gentiles will be offered salvation. And if you don't believe, you also will be cut off, period. That's all it's saying. He's saying that, uh, you know, we see that God who set apart Israel, that they are cut off right now. They, they have been cut off because they refuse to believe. But we also see that he's not done with them and that he will be dealing with them. And at some point when they're brought to the fullness of truth, then we will benefit. The world will benefit from their uh, eyes being opened. Uh, and so he's saying if he did it to that, that people, you're no different. As Gentiles, if you don't continue in his goodness, meaning if you you as a group do not believe, you'll be cut off too. That That's all it's saying. It has nothing to do with salvific loss. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Amen. Um, all right. So um, in the um, Amplified, I'll read it to you, Brother Cripps. Uh, then appreciate the gracious kindness and the severity of God to those who fell into spiritual ruin, severity, but to you, God's gracious kindness. If you continue in his kindness by faith and obedience to him, otherwise you too will be cut off. All right, there we go. There it is again, faith, faith and obedience and putting those two together in the Amplified. But again, uh, as the verses stated above, the reason why they were cut off was because of unbelief, unbelief. Um, so we continue in faith. Obviously, as believers, we continue in faith and uh, we won't be cut off. So again, as Paul has done throughout all Romans and the study that we've talked about, he keeps hitting the same point again and again to make sure that back then they got it. But also for us now to make sure that we get it because people still aren't getting it. Uh, they're, they're not getting it. They make it be about something else uh, when it's very, very clear by the by the words being used. Uh, I, I think that Paul chose his words very carefully. And uh, we can see it if we really, really pay attention. I love the way the Amplified puts it. And this is exactly what we should do. Appreciate the gracious kindness of and the severity of God to those who felt, and they use the word into spirit, the uh, into spiritual ruin, uh, severity to them, but to you, God's gracious kindness. It is God's gracious kindness, as I mentioned earlier. The grace, the grace is the only reason why we were offered the opportunity to see it in the first place. And um, yeah, so that's the kind of attitude that we should have. And again, just just backing up what uh, Renee's saying, it's not a salvific verse verse whatsoever um it unbelief is the thing that gets you uh cut off so as long as you're continuing in belief you have nothing to worry about um well you know there's a great argument uh about um, bible translations and particularly the kjv only position and i uh uh, I believed and taught and defended KJV only for 25 years, and I still use KJV as my scriptures and test all other translations against it. However, I like to look at other translations because sometimes it can be helpful. But uh, I often find in modern translations little problems, uh, and now the Amplified is pretty darn good and pretty darn helpful, but I do have an issue with the way they're stating this here. In the, in the KJV, verse uh, 22, uh, it says, uh, But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Now, uh, there's nothing in there 
in there that would make me uh, think that this is talking about uh, continuing in good works uh, in order to, uh, uh, so they don't get cut off. Uh, but we know that there is a false, uh, a, a portion of Christendom, a large portion, about 90% of Christendom, who do believe that faith alone in Christ alone is uh, insufficient and that we need to do our religious works to gain salvation and if we don't continue in good works, that we will lose our salvation. And, um, and we often see that in the translations of many of the modern translations. And, and, but there's nothing in this verse that would make me come to that conclusion in the KJV. If thou continue in his goodness, uh, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Now, I'm not sure uh, how to explain it, but I, one thing I'm sure of, it, it's not telling us because Paul's not going to kind of turn around and tell us that you have to continue in good works or otherwise you're going to be cut off and lose your salvation. We know Paul's not going to say in that. So how does the Amplified put phrase it? I don't like it. Uh, verse uh, 22 in the Amplified says, Amen. Um, but to you, God's gracious kindness, if you continue in his kindness by faith and obedience to him, Otherwise, you too will be cut off. Now, I could I could make that make sense. I can make it uh, uh, correct in, by explaining it in a certain way, but I don't like the way it is written because people can 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 you also use it for a, a damnable heresy? They could say that you have to continue in your faith. If you lose faith, you'll be cut off, or if you lose uh, or if you're not obedient following the commandments, you'll be cut off. That's what, how they would argue using this translation. Uh, but I would say the only way of ex making it make sense is uh, by faith, but an obedience means obedience is obeying the gospel. Because the Bible says we've got to obey the gospel. And people say, see, you've got to obey the gospel. Well, the gospel is believing in Jesus. So you, what, what do you have to obey? You have to obediently believe in Jesus. That's, that's what's required. That's what you've got to obey. It's not obeying uh, the, the Mosaic laws. Uh, so I do have a, an issue. Now, how long have we been doing these Bible studies? And I use the Amplified uh, as a resource. And only on a rare occasion do I find a verse where I have to point out a, an issue. But this is one of them. Okay, uh, we'll go to 23 next. Any thoughts on that by either of you before we go to 23? I just want to say thank you for bringing that up because that I, I agree with what you've pointed out here 100%. Um, that's why when I was uh, talking about it, I didn't make a point to talk about the obedience part, but you saw it very clearly, and I appreciate you bringing it up. That's all I have to say. All right, let's go to verse 23 in the KJV. And the, Renee, uh, and they also if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Yeah, it's just saying that people in the nation of Israel, if they come to faith in Christ, they'll be grafted right back on the tree. He, God's not forsaking them. All they have to do is believe. That's it. Yeah. Okay, uh, brother, let me read that in the Amplified for you, brother Cripps, and See if it, uh, okay, and even they, the unbelieving Jews, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. Any yep, there it is, there it is again. If they don't, if they're, uh, uh, the King James says, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, which Paul could have easily said, if they, if they, stop not believing <laughs> if they quit uh not believing in this they'll be grafted back in and the end of the verse is the most important thing to understand for god is able to graft them in again is god able to graft uh, uh israel back in to himself yes absolutely and that's the promise we have to believe that yeah let me ask um both of you and Renee to respond to this. Uh, do you see how a person could take this, these verses here about 
you're taken out, then you're grafted back in as a teeter-totter salvation. You're saved, you're not, you're saved, you're not. Uh, and and uh, how, do you, how would you explain it so that it, it is not understood in that way? What do you mean it saved your, I, I don't understand the question. Well, okay, we know that it's talking about the nation of Israel uh, having the, uh, the the patriarchs and then the Israelites and the Mosaic Law and then the lineage to create the Messiah. All of that is is part of this, but yeah, uh, as they're, they're so they're part of this plan for this nation to be a vehicle and of right. course for the nation to be saved as a right. whole. And yet most of them don't get saved. So people could say, "Well, look, it says here that." Uh, uh, if they were cut off, but they could be grafted back in. So it's like you lost your salvation and you get it, you can gain it back. Again. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, there's always a remnant that believes and those remain. The rest of them were cut off until they believe. And it's just going back and forth to argue the point. Like you, what is it? Prosopopoeia, where he argues the point with a question. He's kind of getting ahead of, what people will say and what they might do in their minds by boasting against Israel. So he's just trying to prove that it's all about faith and that you're no more favored than they are, et cetera. And that and if you believe you're in, if you don't believe you're out, but it's not that they got it and lost it, got it and lost it. There's a remnant that does believe and the rest don't believe. But if they do believe they'll be brought back in because they were, God's chosen people. And then because of unbelief, now they're kind of not serving his purpose. They're outside of the faith. Now it's gone to believing Jews and Gentiles, one new man in Christ that's serving God's purpose. So, but if they believe, they'll be grafted right back in. Does that make but, sense? But, but um, my, uh, what I'm asking is, uh, I can see how the Lordship heretic. Oh yeah. Say, see, you're cut off. That means you lost your salvation, and yeah. then you're grafted back in. That means you're getting your salvation back. But we we know that this is talking about, as we said, not uh -huh. individuals who were in Israel who got saved and then they were cut out and then they grafted back in. Right. But a group of people who they were they were part of this plan for God, and then as a whole, they rejected this uh, the, the solution. But then uh, they're not; it's not individuals gaining and losing. Right, and right. Gaining Same salvation. with the Gentiles. It's not individual Gentiles. It's Gentiles as a group, just like you're saying. They're talking about Israel as a group. Some remained therein, and then others were cut off, meaning they were cut off from being in God's service and so forth until they do come to uh, the faith. And then they'll be grafted right back in to service for God. But they weren't, they didn't have it as Israel through the law and then lose it because they believe Jesus. Amen. You know, because they didn't believe Jesus. Yeah, they're talking to a group of people in regards to a group, just like the Gentiles are a group. He's referring to Israel or uh, the 12 tribes of Israel as a group. So I'm glad you brought that up because they do do that. It's unfortunate. All right. Brother Cripps, anything on that before we go to the next verse? No, I think you guys covered it. Thanks, Brother Luke. Okay. So now verse uh, 24 uh, in the KJV. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree boom all right um well, let me uh, we're ready to go you go ahead and go first on this this time brother oh thank you yes <laughs> yes 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 okay so he's paul's making this point here about the what renee said and and i don't want to steal renee's um the description of this I'm, I'm i'm sure she'll she'll go more into this herself but it's what she was talking about the real thing that happens with the with the wild olive tree um and the one that's dying and you take the a living uh, wild olive tree or, or, or a living olive tree and put it into the dying one. And then within a few days, you can see within three days, I think Renee said, if I'm not mistaken, 
then you're able to see if it if it takes root and there's there's new life in the dead tree. Um, so Paul is Paul is making the point very very clear here. The wild the olive tree, which is wild by nature, were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? So Israel is of the own original olive tree. Their branches were taken out because of unbelief, as he's described in the verses above. And if they turn away from their unbelief and believe in uh, the Messiah, that they'll be grafted back into the tree which they're originally taken out of to begin with. Uh, it's so clear. It's so absolutely, absolutely clear. Thank you. Okay, uh, Renee, uh, verse 24. Yep. It, again, it's just a, a, a kind of a repetition of what he has said. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, he's talking about the Gentiles because it's wild. It's not the uh, the one at home. It's not the uh, olive tree of Israel. And work grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. How much more shall these, which be natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? That's interesting, Luke, how that, I, I, I agree with uh, how that was explained with the Israelites being the branches here. And it is absolutely working with the context of this verse. It's saying, hey, you didn't even, you, you had no part of this olive tree. You weren't a branch, you weren't a root, you weren't a leaf, you were no part of this olive tree that you're grafted into. You're wild. You're from a completely different bush. And you were grafted in. How much more shall the natural branches be grafted to their own olive tree? So it's just saying that God has already laid a foundation for them to believe. They have the scriptures. They can see Jesus in all of the scriptures. It's just that that if you being having nothing to do with this tree were grafted in successfully, how much more were the branches that were supposed to be there be grafted in? You know, the natural branches. And it's talking about Israel. Amen. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, I made a really big deal about chapter nine and trying to make sure everybody got that right. In part of chapter nine, Paul started off by saying that, look, uh, Israel, uh, first of all, they had the patriarchs and, 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 and the prophets, and they had the, the law and the prophets, the scriptures, and then they had the genealogy to generate the, the Messiah. All of that, that's what they had. And yet, 95, 98% of Israel did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. They rejected him. They, they didn't get it. And... Uh, uh, why not? So the, 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 there was an argument at the time, apparently, that, well, why should we believe in Jesus? His own people didn't even believe him. They rejected him. And that's what chapter 9 is. To Paul trying to make that point that, um, okay, but now uh, this idea of being grafted in and out is, uh, let's say that right here, my arm is severed. Now, if someone else has uh, had another person's arm, let's say I'd like a transplant. Uh, my arm was not available, but someone else's arm was there. There's a chance, though, that we can graft their arm on, and maybe it'll take, maybe it won't, I don't know, but it's not natural. But if, if I could take my own arm, and we could graft my own arm back on, there's a much better chance that it's going to take because it's... Uh, it, it's from the original, it's part of the original. And uh, it's the same thing with this idea of um, Israel had, you had, as you said, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Jesse, David, uh, all these, uh, that's part of this tradition. And um, for, it's it should be, be natural for them to be the believers. You'd think that if anybody's going to be a believer, it would be be a Jew. 
I mean, it's not doesn't it's not natural for a Gentile to believe. That's why when Paul would go off preach into the Gentile world, he'd have to get creative and get clever because uh, they didn't have all of the um, I don't want to call it baggage, but all of the 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 benefit of all the knowledge of the scriptures. When he would talk to the Jews, they knew the scriptures. The Gentiles didn't have all that, so he had to find some other way of communicating who this God is, this God of Israel. And uh, so it, it should be a natural, easy thing for a Jewish person to be a believer rather than a Gentile. Uh, so that's really the point here that, uh, yeah, the, the Gentiles, the, the Jewish people, for them to get grafted back in, it should be a very natural, easy thing, much easier than for a Gentile to come into it. All right, uh, we'll go to the next verse, but I need my fan. <sighs> Okay. Um, well, I didn't read that in the Amplified, did it? Let me read 24 in the Amplified. It says, uh, For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and against nature you are grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much easier will it be to graft these who are the natural branches back into the original parent stock of their own olive tree? That's basically everything that we've all been trying to communicate right there. Okay, verse uh, 25 in, in the KJV says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Renee? No, I'm getting ready to be live right now. Um, uh, yeah, just a sec. Um, it, it's clear that God is going not done working on them. Although there's a remnant that believes now. We know that because all the apostles, they believed. Uh, there were many believing Jews in Jerusalem at the time. Uh, Paul really wanted to reach them. Peter was sent to the circumcision. Uh, 3,000 Jews were saved on Pentecost. So uh, we know there is a remnant, uh, just like there is every other time. Like in the time of Elijah, there was a remnant. So uh, the point he's making here, let's actually read it. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. The mystery is that uh, uh, Gentiles would be grafted into Israel. Uh, Jesus hinted at it when he mentioned the first would be last and last would be first. Uh, in many of his stories, it's unfortunate many people don't see that in the parables and try to apply it to the church to spread fear. Um, it says, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. And I, I constantly say, people, you need to stop this prideful, puffed up hatred against the physical descendants of Abraham, the, the, the physical nation of Israel. Um and they use those terrible verses, Jews that, that are not Jews. But it's just like just such hatred being spewed and just misunderstanding scriptures. Bottom line, don't get puffed up or hate anyone, especially Israel. Mm -hmm. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. Why? The, because then it could be offered to the world. We benefit from their blindness. Don't hate them for it. We're going to be more blessed. When their uh, when their eyes are open, so we're blessed now. We're going to be blessed when they're when they're believing. Can we just be say they bless us? Can we just say we're blessed, no matter what they do, right? Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So God is dealing with the Gentiles right now. Sure sounds like God's focus has moved from the nation temporarily to the Gentile nations, but He is not done with them it's a mystery blindness in part has happened to israel not all of them don't believe there's a remnant that believes and eventually he will re revert his attention back to the nation of israel and that's where you see the time of great tribulation the time of jacob's trouble the time of israel's trouble that is not for the church the church has nothing to do with it I don't know why people say the church is there. It's about the church. It's about Jacob. 
and he's going to be done. Uh, the Gentiles have their time, and he's going to take his attention off the Gentile nations, and it's going to go back to Israel. And we see where 12,000 from each 12 tribe is going to have a preachers preaching the gospel. 144,000 Jewish evangelists are going to be uh, preaching the good news during the time of Jacob's trouble. So that is a mystery that it's going to the Gentiles, but his attention is going to return to the physical nation of Israel, the physical descendants of Abraham, because those promises are not null and void. He's coming back. As it says, the gifts and calling of, Oh, I'm sorry. I gave that verse a couple times. We're not up on it yet. Uh, I didn't mean to do that brother Luke, but uh, it's clear here that God will return his attention back to that nation. He's not leaving them in that blindness forever. Amen. All right, Brother Cripps, uh, I'll let me read it in the Amplified, verse 25 for you. It says, I do not want you, believers, to be unaware of this mystery, that is God's previously hidden plan, uh, so that you will not be wise in your own opinion, uh, that a uh, partial hardening has temporarily happened to Israel to, uh, to last until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. Yeah, this will be very short. That that just explains it uh, in an even better way. So the the bottom line is he's just uh, Paul's just stating that it was hidden. It was a mystery. We didn't understand it. Uh, God's chosen people didn't understand it back then. All they knew was that they were God's chosen people, and He was their God, and they're supposed to be His people. That's it. And that other people outside of Israel were not uh, generally uh, invited or allowed uh, in, into that belief system. But now it's been revealed. It's, it, it's been revealed and it's open now. Um, we all can have this knowledge right now as we speak to understand God's plan. His, the, the mystery is now um, uh, ha has been revealed, but it's not finished. It's not finished. Um, Rene said a couple times, he's not done. He's not done with Israel. He's not done with Israel. We, we can, um, we can believe that we can have faith in that, that it's not over yet. And I also like what she referred to, because this is exactly what the point is. The 144,000 that's talked about in, Re in revelations, um, believing, uh, uh, is, 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 uh, Israelite, Israelites, Jews, um, that will be preaching. Not to mention you have the angels preaching as well. And then you have the, the people that believe because of the 144,000. Any offshoot of that at that time with everything else that's going on. Talk, when people talk about having um, uh, having a resurgence of belief in, in, in this country, for instance, uh, what do you think it's going to be like around the world in that time with everything that's going on? Like I said earlier, it spread like wildfire. It's going to be amazing. Um, and, and then we'll all see uh, a resurgence of uh, belief in God as uh, Christ finishes up his work and then um, we're together with him forever. And it's something I look forward to very much. Thank you. Oops. Okay. Um, well, th this is where I have to diverge. Um, the... Um, I keep on talking about my playlists, and every time I keep on referring to my playlist, I'm always afraid people think I'm just so self-absorbed. No, they it answers a lot of questions, dude. You did a lot of work putting those together. Thank you, sister. I, uh, you're right, and, and uh, I have a playlist on um, dispensations, uh, dispensationalism. Futurism, preterism, historicism, millennial, um, uh, the uh, the kingdom, all, all, all these things. And, and, I, and another one I referred to earlier called Paul Onlyism. And these are all kind of related to these subjects. And these playlists I put together, um, some of them are like 10 hours of study or more. And I, this the subject, there's so much to it that for me to take a minute now and try to, to present the case and defend the case is impossible. The only thing I can do is ask everybody 
go to the playlist and watch them so you can better understand. I'm going to give you just a tiny little thumbnail sketch. Now, uh, Renee, I think you still believe in dispensational futurism, as, as I did for 25 years, uh, that the uh, there's going to be a rapture and then a seven-year tribulation and then a second coming and then a millennial kingdom and then uh, the... I don't quite believe it that sim simply, but I, I do believe in a literal millennial kingdom. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and, and that's fine. I don't, I don't take issue. It's just that I, I've come to a different conclusion. And But part of this is when I see the word mystery here, one of the things that's done in, in uh, Paul onlyism is uh, they they uh, they teach that the mystery is that nobody knew the gospel of grace alone, faith alone, and Christ alone until Paul revealed it. That's what they all argue is the mystery. Except for Adam and Eve. <laughs> Yeah, um, and the um, uh, and then of course uh, you could think that the mystery has something to do with this uh, a, a, a future uh, uh, this eschatology being part of the mystery how things are going to be playing out that nobody knew that when we go to this verse that we're looking at here it says uh, I do not want you believers oh that's the amplified let me see if I can see it in the KJV. Um, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Now, I listened to your explanation, Renee, and it fits perfectly with that, that viewpoint. But, but I, I think that the mystery here is, is really the same mystery that I would say that everything everything when paul says mystery pertains to this one thing and he he defines what the mystery is here in ephesians i'm going to read just a few verses from ephesians because if is anybody is unsure what the word mystery means when paul's talking about mystery it's he's he defines it right here he says ephesians 3 1 uh th through 8 for this cause i paul the prisoner of jesus christ for you gentiles if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given me to you word of course we talked a lot about what dispensationalism and we we i think we all agree now that dispensation just means god's dispensing revelation more understanding throughout history as he reveals more to us uh, it's not a different period of time where there's a different rules in place for salvation and uh, so he says there's a um, dispensation of the grace of God. So that means God's dispensing his grace. Uh, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now, in verse 6, he explains what this mystery is. The mystery is that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of this promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of the, uh, the grace of God unto me, uh, by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than, well, I want the rest of it's not necessary, but he's, he says there the definition of this when he uses the word mystery. The mystery is that they, uh, they didn't realize until this point in time that Gentiles will be included. They always thought that the Gentiles are separate. This God of Israel was only for Abraham and his descendants in Israel, uh, and that was the mystery that was hidden, that the whole world would be included. It wasn't that uh, there's going to come a time in the future where people are going to say by grace, not works, or, or that there's going to be a come a time in the future where this end times eschatology is all going to be playing out a certain way. Uh, many people think that though that's part of this mystery, but Paul says the mystery is just simply that people didn't realize that the Gentiles are, are part of God's plan. Amen. He also says in, about the Old Testament, where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. He talks about the Old Covenant during the time when sin abounded because of the law, that grace did much more abound. So we can see, you know, like you were saying, from Adam and Eve on up, 
Cain offering works. Abel being, I mean, that's not a mystery. You know, we see the blood always purging sin. And it was foreshadowed in the feast and everything. But God's being saved by grace. Nowhere in scripture did God offer eternal life through the law. Uh, everything was always by faith. And every person in the Old Testament named righteous or just was because of their faith. I mean, Lot surely wasn't a righteous man by his works, you know. So that you're right. That was not the mystery. Mystery was that God was going to have more than just Israel. It was going to be offered to all, uh, all the world who believed. You're right. Okay, so let's go to... Um... We're, uh, we're pretty much out of time here, but let me just read the, the 25, 6, and 7 in context and get your thoughts on all that, and then we'll be finished here. Um, I'm going to read it in the Amplified, though. Um, uh, I do not want you believers to be unaware of this mystery, that is God's previously hidden plan, so that you will not be wise in your own opinion, that a partial hardening of uh, it has temporarily happened to Israel to la uh, until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so at that time, all Israel, that is all Jews who have personal faith in Jesus as Messiah, will be saved. That's an important distinction. All Israel will be saved. That means all who have faith in Jesus. Just as it is written in Scripture, the Deliverer, the Messiah, will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. That's all the way through verse 27, and that's that's where we're finished for tonight. So let, give, give me your thoughts on that last portion there. Uh, Brother Cripps, why don't you go first on this one? Thank you, no problem. Um, usually you ask me when you when you bring up another verse, you usually say, do you have anything you say uh, about that? And I, I did want you to say it this time, and you didn't, but... Uh, from Ephesians 3, I just wanted to bring up one verse, verse at the end, if you don't hey, mind. Brother Cripps, Brother Cripps, I'm sorry. Uh, do you have anything to say about Ephesians 3? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I know. Hey, Brother Cripps, do you, you, you have anything you to say? You say that. <laughs> no. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was all rearing up to go and making, making sure that I didn't uh, interrupt the flow of everything. But yeah, that's exactly. Thank you. Um, so verse 9 says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Christ Jesus, by Jesus Christ. Um, that's That sums that up all so well. And thank you, Brother Luke, for bringing this up and, and pointing out what the mystery means, which uh, isn't what other people have said, as, as you very well uh, pointed out. Um, that it was that uh, God has called all men to Him, not just not just the not just the Jews, not just Israel, but all men. That was what was hid, and these verses bear that out to the point of verse nine: uh, the fellowship of the mystery, the fellowship of Gentiles and Jews all together in the same place. Nobody's being replaced. It, it, you know, it's not well. They've forgotten about Israel, and now it's all about the Gentiles. No, it is a fellowship. We're all together. We will all be together in the end. And, um, okay, so thank you for giving me that little bit of uh, comment there. And then on the verses, uh, twenty. we read 25. I got to find the right place once. 25 through 27 is the final thoughts. Perfect. Final thoughts. Um, uh, we talked about that. Okay, 26. Uh, and so all Israel shall be saved. This is the good news. So all Israel shall be saved as it was written. So all the information is there throughout the whole Bible leading up to this point. How they miss it, I don't I don't get it. How they think that God's done with Israel, I do not understand. It's 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 all laid out right here. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That's his people. That's the Israeli people. It, 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 it's it's so clear. Turn away ungodliness from them, for this is my covenant unto them. This is his promise, God's promise to his own people, to Abraham and all his descendants, when I shall take away their sins. So it's again the same idea that in in the end, in realizing that they crucify the Messiah, and then right after that thought, right after the the. 
the incredibly awful feeling of discovering this and realizing it for the first time, then seeing that God has forgiven them. It takes away their sins. Reconciliation, recon reconciling his own people back to himself when it's all said and done. And what a glorious day that'll be. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So, uh, Renee, we, we talked about 25, but uh, 26 and 27. Well, yeah. that'll be the last verse we talk about tonight. Yeah, yes. and I, I'm glad uh, we stopped here because when it says, so all Israel shall be saved. As it's written, there shall come from out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sin. If you read in Matthew, see, you and I have a different eschatology, but this is what I will uh, say, I believe. Um, that when Jesus is talking to like Matthew 24 and over in Mark, I think it's 13, where he's given all these things to look for before his second coming. You know, nation will come against nation as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, etc. Then he says, and he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Now that is taken by Calvinist and Lordshippers out of context when he's talking to Israel. How do I know he's talking to Jews? Well, for one, he says, pray that it doesn't happen on a Sabbath. Uh, if you're in... Uh, if you're on the rooftops in Judea, that's another way I know he's talking to them. So this is not to the church. Another reason I know it's not to the church, the church did not quite exist yet. The apostles are asking about what's going to happen to their nation and when the temple's going to be destroyed and all that. So it's all around what's going on with the nation of Israel and not the world at large or the church. So when it says, he shall endure, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. If you are surviving that period, you're enduring to the end, you will be saved. All of Israel will be saved. There will be a remnant. One third of Israel survives this terrible time. It's about two thirds of them, I believe, perish in this terrible war, or this terrible persecution that happens. And if you're surviving or enduring this time period, you will be saved. Christ physically comes back. And that's when they see the wounds in his hands and go, where'd you get these? I received these and now to my friends and they mourn. And so all Israel shall be saved. Amen. The remnant that's left, they're going to see him. They're going to believe they're going to be saved. So uh, that's what I believe it means when it says that. All right, then. Um, so uh, we'll finish. We end it right after verse 27 we'll pick up with verse 28 next time uh let's take a minute now i, I know that i'm keeping you up a little later than uh we should uh so we'll just take a minute now to kind of sum up our thoughts on the, the study tonight uh brother cripps you want to go first sure thank you uh yeah so it's uh, another great study um again i love how paul just keeps pounding the same point again and again and uh this these uh, particular verses I think he's trying to make it clear that God's not, uh, yet again, not done with Israel. And um, just just trying to tell us, don't be conceited, Gentiles. Um, be, be glad, have gratitude that you're, that you're even in this position to begin with. And um, just be grateful. And that's the way that we can live our lives. We don't have to hate Israel or you know worry about what they do. We, we keep our eyes focused on Christ. We, we're not worried about what they do. Yes, God's not done with them. We'll see things happen if we survive into the end. Uh, but his, his grace and love towards his own people, as he's promised from the beginning, um, he'll finish it. And I think that, that uh, that's what Paul's main points are here. And I'm thankful for his grace, thankful that I'm a wild olive tree grafted in and very thankful to be in that position. Thanks a lot, guys. Amen. Yeah, I, it, it does really continue to blow my mind how um, the three of us, we're not uh, Jews by nature, by genealogy. And yet we, we can see the scriptures that it's clear to us, it's obvious, and we believe. And yet the people who should, the, the natural believers, the people who, I mean, any Jew, every Jew should be a believer. 
and yet most of them don't. It's, it, it boggles my mind how we can believe such a thing, and they're the ones that really should be believing. Amen. They have everything there, uh, you know, supporting them. They have, as I said, the, the, the patriarchs, and they have Israel, they have the scriptures. Yeah. They have Messiah the that came from the, from the, the messianic prophecies. Yeah. Uh, all, all of that, it should be so obvious to every Jew, and yet uh, the Gentiles are the ones that are believers. So it, it always it continues to blow me in my mind uh, how this. They're the natural branches. Yeah, it's Christianity is uh, considered to be a, a Gentile religion. But it's so, that's what I was going to say. It's so not. We, with the, when the Catholic Church did that, they really just. Oh, it makes me angry because we should have all been one new man, both Jew and Gentile. There shouldn't be messianic congregations. Yeah. It should be Gentile together in one new man, yes. one body, one body, you know? And, and it's crazy to me that they, the, the Jews even say that the New Testament is a Gentile book, but it's written by Jews, except yeah. Luke. Yeah, except That's Luke. All the books. You know, it, it's really, it's really crazy. Um, uh, I, I, I still can't. I'm my, I, again, my mouth's a gate. Anybody can read this and say God's done with them. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, enjoyed it very much as usual. And uh, oh, Luke, what? I did want to address something here that's been going on in the chat room all night. One, the main thing is. Paul said, don't argue over your genealogy. It's vain. And arguing over if the Jews are really black people or this person is that, look, Jesus is every color because we're his body. It doesn't matter what he came, what form he came in according to the flesh. And it doesn't matter what the nation of Israel came in according to the flesh. But it's really silly to say it's one race because they integrate it with all the other nations. So it's just, it's really silly to say that. We all came from one of the three of Noah's sons. All that everybody's one color, just a different pigment of the same color. And it's just silly to try to uh these what is it, Kate? Vain and foolish questions avoid. But Paul specifically says, do not argue over genealogy. In this whole chat room, I've seen the, the people try to reel them back in. We don't care about that. Let's listen to the Bible study. And a few of them going, this is a good Bible study. But most of it is just the constant talking about either, either me, and I'm even guilty of it, fighting for the gospel when work salvationists are coming in, or discussing things like genealogy, and it's not. We do these Bible studies so that people can grow and we can grow and iron can sharpen iron. And I'm really proud of the uh, wrench, the wrenchers, <laughs> the wrenchers, uh, because they keep trying to pull people in, you know. So I, I keep reeling them back to what the uh, what we're talking about. But I appreciate uh, most of you actually paid attention to what we were saying because we really study this stuff and it's for your benefit as well as ours. So I, I just, I had to say something about the fighting over genealogy. We, so much time was wasted in the chat room over that. All right. Thank you. Uh, I, I haven't really followed the chat room at all tonight. A lot of times I can't pay much attention because I'm trying to focus on kind of uh, uh, being the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the host of the discussion. And it requires well, my attention. So, uh, but I am really really disappointed that often uh, it, it se seems to be the rule not the exception that the chat room's conversation is not relevant to the subject matter that's being discussed uh, as a whole uh, as you said Renee we have some some moderators that are attempting to try to get everybody on the same page with us in the discussion but it's it's very very difficult it's very disappointing to me and let's imagine now, we, we call this the church of the eternally secure, but we're not all under one roof. If we were all under one roof right now, and you had us, let's say, up at the front of the church, and uh, you have everybody else in the pews or in the chairs, and, and, they're, uh, and, and we're carrying on this Bible study, 
you would expect that the congregation is taking notes and listening and asking questions about the Bible study, not the entire congregations engaged in all kinds of side conversations. They're not not pertaining to the study. That's what you think. That's what happens when you're under one roof. And it's just really, I'm really sad, sad that that we don't have that. That's the one thing that we don't have that I'm sure we would have if we we're under under the same roof. And I'm hoping there's an answer and there's a way of getting it, uh, accomplishing that because. Uh, I know a lot of people, they watch the broadcast later and they, they really appreciate it. They're actually listening to what we're saying and they're considering it and learning and, and uh, have follow-up questions. But I think most of the people in the chat room are missing 90% of what we're saying. They're not, it's like, it's like we're talking to the wall, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so let, let that be an, a rebuke or an exhortation to the chat room, uh, not just tonight, but every night. Uh, okay, now let me uh, announce that uh, uh, I don't have anybody scheduled for this Friday's interview, uh, uh, but uh, Brother Mark is uh, trying to be the uh, kind of the booking agent for me now. He's going to try to get someone for my Friday night interviews, uh, so we may have someone, but I do have uh, Brother uh, Michael, uh, Ultimate Mordecai, scheduled for Monday. That's April 8th on Monday. I'll be interviewing him, so I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, don't forget to join us Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific for uh, our, our Sunday church program. Um, okay, um, I guess any any last words, uh, Renee or, or Brother Cripps? Sure. Just to thank everybody. Thank you guys for coming. I, I am so grateful that you guys just fill up the chat room here and spend time with us every Wednesday. Thank you. Yeah, I'll agree with that and just say that it's uh, uh, wonderful to be here yet again, and I look forward to next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you to everyone in the chat for showing up, and I hope you guys have a good week. Yeah. Okay. All right. Renee and, and Brother Cripps, uh, uh, thank you again for being with me tonight, and uh, thanks to everybody in the chat room, and uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus. <laughs>